It's happening to me again. The Linux hype train has grabbed me by the gonads, and this time it's PewDiePie out of all people who's got me hyped up. He recently made a video about switching to Linux, and he reminded me of everything I don't like about Windows. And even though I know it's bad for me, I keep relapsing. I've known for years that it doesn't have to be this way, but I also realized something. I've only ever tried one Linux distro, Pop OS. There are hundreds of distros out there. It's unfair for me to throw in the towel after only ever trying one. To my surprise, PewDiePie used Arch Linux in his video. I never really considered Arch, because everyone in their Mother usually talks about how complicated it is, but I thought if PewDiePie was able to use it, then maybe it's not as complicated as people make it out to be. Plus, I heard that Arch is one of the most minimalist distros out there. No pre-installed app launchers, file managers, browsers, nothing. You install only what you want. I was sick of the bloat in Windows, so Arch sounded like the perfect fit for me. With the distro finally picked, I decided to wipe my extra SSD and start dual booting. A lot of people say that installing Arch is complicated, but I just took my time and went through the Arch Wiki installation guide. I know that there's a script that automates the installation process, but I figured it would abstract too many things for me. I figured if I want to learn Arch, I might as well manually go through the process to understand what's going on step by step. Because if things break, there won't be a magic script to help me there. The longest part for me was partitioning and formatting my SSD since I did not want to mess up my other drives. And after about an hour, I managed to get Arch installed with no issues. It was at this point that I knew they were not playing when they said Arch was a minimalist distro because it was just me and the terminal. That's it. This is my entire operating system. Now it was time to set up my environment and what I needed was a display server protocol, a DSP allows you to use the computer graphically, like opening applications and moving windows around, you know, all the normal things you do on a computer on a day-to-day -day basis. Without a DSP, we would be stuck with just the terminal. There are three DSP options out there. One, X11, two, Wayland, and three, Mir. X11 is an older display server and is the most commonly used. Wayland is the new kid on the block that's trying to replace X11, and we won't even get into Mir because it's not that popular. And I made a very calculated decision here. I decided to choose Wayland because it sounded cooler. I was able to install it just fine, but I quickly realize that even though it's the more modern DSP, it's not as stable. So some apps just don't work well on Wayland. One of the apps I use in my workflow is Barrier. Barrier allows you to switch between different machines with the same keyboard and mouse. So I can go from my Windows PC to my Mac laptop in seconds. I spent so many hours trying to get Barrier to work on Wayland. This is my main machine that I'm on right now that you see. And essentially if I move my mouse all the way to the right, it's supposed to go into my Mac. I wanna move my mouse to the right, but you can see that it's not going to my computer. With Barrier being such an important part of my workflow, I decided to switch away from Wayland. I just couldn't take the risk of more compatibility issues, which left me no choice but to switch to X11. And Barrier ended up working flawlessly on it. Wow. Voila. I'm also glad I made the switch because if I didn't, I would have never found out about Suckless. Suckless is a community-driven project that creates simple and minimal software. It's software that sucks less. You can build the software locally and configure it by editing the source code. The first piece of Suckless software I ended up installing was DWM. DWM stands for Dynamic Window Manager. With DWM, you can tile, float, and drag windows around. You also have these numbers up here, which are called tags, and they work just like workspaces. So I can be writing code in tag one while I procrastinate in tag two. I also downloaded another Another suckless app called DWM Blocks, which allows me to add whatever I want to the status bar. And although you can edit the source code however you want, for the people who don't want to edit the source code, another cool part about suckless apps is the ability to patch features in. With most apps, when the developers add a new feature, you have to deal with it. If you're lucky, the developers will add a setting that allows you to turn that new feature off. But with suckless, you start with the absolute minimal version of the software and you add in features that other people created through patches. This gives you the ultimate freedom of choice because you get to build the suckless app however you want. You can think of it like adding a to a game, like Factorio or something. If you take DWM, for example, you can see that there are a crap ton of patches that people have created. You wanna make your menu transparent? There's a patch for that. You wanna add window icons? There's a patch for that. You wanna change the way that the windows are tiled in? There are multiple patches for that. But apart from learning about Suckless, most apps were easy to install. You can do this all from the command line since most popular apps are in the package manager Pac-Man or the AUR, which is the Arch user repository. But sometimes it ain't that easy. I found this out with DaVinci Resolve. I edit all of my videos with DaVinci Resolve. So if this didn't work, this whole whole Linux experiment was going down the drain. Luckily, DaVinci Resolve Studio was in the AUR, and just like with other applications, I opened up the terminal to install it with Yay, but I kept getting this error. When I read the comments from the AUR, someone mentioned that there was a problem with the package not automatically downloading the source file from the website. So following the instructions from the commenter, I had to download the source file from the DaVinci Resolve website and build the package myself, which sounds easy in hindsight, but it took me a few hours to even figure out how to do that. Surely there wouldn't be any more issues, right? But then I attempted to add some footage to the timeline, and the audio 
audio was gone. You don't even see the waveforms. I then spent hours researching just to find out that DaVinci Resolve on Arch Linux does not like AAC encoded audio. So I decided to change the audio encoding on OBS from AAC to PCM and that solved the issue. Which means there are no more issues, right? But then I had issues with recording voiceovers since for some reason, all of the inputs were showing up like this instead of showing my actual mic. I literally went through every single one of these inputs and tried to record my voice with it, but none of them worked. Hello, hello, hello. What the hell? I'll be honest, with most things, I'm able to figure it out because I'm too stubborn to quit, but I could not for the life of me solve this problem. So instead of spending more hours on it, I decided to take the L and switch to Audacity. Create a new one, I can start recording. And oh my God, look at that. It just works. It kind of sucks because doing the voiceover in DaVinci Resolve means that everything is kind of in one place, but I'm willing to take the sacrifice here. I hope you're seeing a trend here because the harsh reality is that things might not always work exactly how you want them to work. So you either have to spend hours trying to find a solution if there even is one or find a good alternative. I managed to get DaVinci Resolve somewhat working, but gaming on Linux was a coin toss for me. To give you the rundown, if you want to play Steam games, you have to enable Proton, which is what helps Linux users play games that are Windows only. One game that I was excited to try out was Rust. I'm not a huge gamer, but sometimes I will play Rust with my wife just to mess around with people. You wait there. I downloaded Rust and opened it and everything was looking good until I tried to join a Rust server and I got this message. That's when I did more research, found this website called ProtonDB and read that if you wanna play Rust, you can only play on servers with anti-cheat disabled, which sounds like a cheating nightmare. ProtonDB is a website that ranks how compatible games are with Linux, which I wish I would've checked out before installing Rust because it looks like Rust has a bronze rating. But I guess I got a little unlucky here because you can see that there are plenty of other games that have good ratings. So I guess it really comes down to luck whether the game you enjoy playing is supported or or not. I'm not too worried about it because I'm dual booting, so I can always hop on Windows whenever I want to play something. But if you're serious about gaming, if you're a serious gamer, you probably need to research your favorite games first to see if they are compatible with Linux before making the full switch, or you can just dual boot like me to get the best of both worlds. Now enough about gaming. I want to demonstrate how horrible the performance feels on Windows after using Arch every day. I'm going to open these four applications on both systems starting now. GIMP, Audacity, Google Chrome, Discord. GIMP. Audacity, uh, Google, and then Discord. Audacity still loaded, okay, Audacity loaded. I only did this because I really wanted to demonstrate that the bloat is unreal on Windows. I feel like I'm spoiled with Arch because it can actually keep up with my brain, but who's to say that this shouldn't be the norm? It makes me wonder how I put up with such slow speeds for so long, but I guess I'm officially an Arch user now, but whether you use Arch or not, doesn't matter. It's all about finding something that fits your needs. If you like what you see, then give Arch a try. But honestly, if I were to do it again in the future, I would download VirtualBox and try out as many distros as I can. I feel like that's the only way to find out if Linux is right for you. And honestly, that sounds kind of fun so if you guys want me to do that let me know anyways if you enjoyed this video make sure to go nad tap that like button for me and i'll see you guys in the next one peace